contrived to have all of this stuff together and ready and everything else, but I managed to screw some things up last night, and I think Dick would have been perfectly okay with me just winging it and telling you all. I am Dick's niece. My name is Cheryl. I'm speaking on behalf of the family. A number of us are here today. Dick's brother Jack is here. Jack's daughter Tony, Dick's niece. Uh, my sister Judy, another of Dick's nieces, and Owen, a cousin, right is back here as well. Um, so I'm going to speak on behalf of the family and just let you know um, a little bit about Dick that you may or may not know. Uh, so Dick was born May 11, 1935. He said he was the apple of his parents and his family's eye until not even a year later, his younger brother Jack was born. And Jack had curly blonde hair, bright blue eyes, and chubby thighs, and everybody loved Jack. <laughs> Everybody's attention was paid to Jack. Took the limelight away from Dick. But Dick dealt with that okay. Um, little I bit still got the blonde curly hair and the envelope and all about it. First haircut was six years old. You want to know that? You want to know. And so they kept the curls when it was six years old. Uh, so that looks now. 70, 76 years later, he still has the envelope with those curls in it. <laughs> because I've talked with him necessarily. I'm not going to go into the details of all of that. Because uh, it's not, I guess, anything for the family to be proud of. But Dick assumed a very uh, nurturing role for his siblings, for his younger siblings. Uh, looking out for his younger brother and his two younger sisters all throughout his youth. And at the age of 23, he left Louisville, where he was born and raised, Louisville, Kentucky. He left there, he moved to Cincinnati for a short period of time, and he came here to New York. Uh, we didn't know a lot about anything that went on in Dick's world during those years. Um, he'd call my mom, talk for hours with my mom on the phone, telling her stories about things that went on in the city of New York, things about the Big Apples, and she didn't always have a chance to see, and we certainly didn't have a chance to see either. She'd send him lengthy letters, he would send lengthy letters, but never did Dick talk about what he was doing in terms of gay rights activism or the gay rights movement. And I like to think, and I'm pretty sure I'm spot on because I've talked with Dick a lot about this in recent years, um, he didn't want his family to worry. He just didn't want them to be afraid. He knew they were already afraid of the big city and, and where he was, and he didn't want to put any more worry in their minds. But Spent a lot of time with my wide. He did, and I will tell you that impact stretches far and wide. And, uh, and I showed this with, with a couple of you all that two years ago when Jack turned 80, Dick was 81, and the family invited him home to celebrate Dick's, uh, Jack's 80th birthday. And he came home and he stayed with me for a period of time. I think he usually kind of flip-flopped over the last couple of years. He'd stay at my house for about a week and then he'd go and stay with Jack for about a week. And it was a Friday afternoon or Friday morning when he got up. It was rainy that day. And I said, what are you going to do today? We didn't really have any plans. What do you want to do? And he said, everybody in New York always asks me if I've ever been to the LGBTQ Center in Louisville. And I've never been. So I think I'd kind of like to do that. I said, well, gosh. Dick, I don't even know where the heck it is, but we'll find it, you know. So I did a quick Google search, and I found that it was at the University of Louisville's campus. And my husband, real trooper that he is, loaded us up in the car and drove us down to the L campus. You can imagine, you walk into this um, facility on a Friday afternoon, nobody's around on the, on the university campus, we walk in, and we see these two women chatting with each other, and it was right after the 50th anniversary of the sip-in here at Julius, and Dick had the New York Times newspaper with him. And when we walked in, she, she said, powerful thing to me. She stepped back and she said to him, she said, we always knew that we were standing on the shoulders of greatness, but we never knew whose shoulders those were until now. And she said, I, I just can't thank you enough. Well, the woman she was talking to was the mother of a young man who was an incoming freshman at UofL for that following school year. And UofL, for as backward as it seems like Kentucky might be, UofL has an, an entire floor, and actually it's probably two floors now, of a dormitory that they save for LGBTQ students. And this woman's son, they were from Western Kentucky, he's gay, and he was coming to UofL, and he wanted to stay in that dorm. And he was interviewing at the time with the other director of the program. 
They came out of the office. Dick's chatting it up with the one woman, telling stories like he always did, holding court. And she, the woman introduced her immediately to the other director. The boy's standing there chatting with me and his mom. And he's like, who is this guy? And we start kind of filling in the piece. Can I get my picture taken with him? And I said, oh, honey, for sure. He's not going to care. He's going to love that. So I'm snapping pictures of this young man. And a good friend of mine at work sent a donation in Dick's name over these past couple of days. She sent to the... Sorry. To her. Today. Louisville have reached out to her and she shared with me their comments and they both remember that day very vividly and they said that young man is majoring in political science. He is an activist, very much, very active in the gay community there in UofL, spearheaded a number of initiatives and he remembers the hour that he spent with Dick. He comes by the center frequently and talks with him about it. That hour that Dick spent with him offering counsel, offering advice. <coughs> It's just giving him some feedback on what it was like and make, making sure this young man, this 18-year-old man knew that the world we're living in today wasn't always the way it is today. And I guess from my perspective, if there's nothing more you can do with your life than to achieve something like that and leave that type of legacy, our family is extremely proud of that. The only thing I will say to you is, the, the thing that I always fall to is love is love. And we should all be entitled to be with the person that we were meant to be with, to, to be the person we were born to be. And Dick believed that, and Dick made sure that that happened, and we couldn't be prouder. I can't thank you all. Every one of you meant something to him. I know he meant something to you, but you all meant something to him. Ever, whether you all like it or not, you're in our lives forever. We love you all. And we are thankful for all of y'all to be here to help celebrate with us today. Thank you again. Thank you.